Hello, everybody. Tyrone TG3 here. Natalie's here as well. Hi. Woo. Oh, God. <laughs> um, so, Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero. The movie slash OVA. Um, yeah. People kept telling me it's not a movie. It's not a movie. It's an OVA. I'm like, guess what it showed up as when I looked for it on the website that I went to go watch it on. It said freaking Yu-Gi-Oh! The movie. It literally, it's not even apologetic about it. It literally just says Yu-Gi-Oh! The movie. And I'm like, I thought we already had a Yu-Gi-Oh! The movie. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, that movie is called Yu-Gi-Oh! The movie Pyramid of Light. <laughs> And I'm like special this one, Americans. Yeah, it's an OVA slash movie, and it doesn't help that it's only 30 minutes long. But uh yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie OVA thingy. Um mm -hmm. So how'd you find out about this, Natalie? Because season zero stuff is extremely hard to find unless you're actively looking for it. Yeah. I think um well it's kinda like once you find like season zero, uh -huh. then people are like, ooh, the movie, like they're linked. So, oh, okay. Like, All right, finish the show, gotta watch the movie. Yeah, I think it showed up in my recommendations after I was uh, got done watching all of season zero. Uh, that's how I ended up finding it. Um, so, this movie does a lot of surprising stuff, though. Mm -hmm. The plot's kind of basic, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the movie essentially. I feel like this was like the the second to final draft before they decided to reboot it. You can yeah. see a lot of like straight up season one stuff just in here now, unapologetically. Like, mm -hmm. this is the movie that gives Kaiba his brown hair. Kaiba <laughs> dyed that hair. He dyed that damn hair. What, what the mm -hmm. fuck? He dyed his hair. What? It's brown now. Brown hair, good old brown, and he's wearing his little Duelist Kingdom outfit, the blue one with the, with the button up dark greenish. But what the hell is that color? Um, <laughs> he's wearing like that. He's wearing his. I, I call it his Kaiba school office out attire. Mm. Um, Joey's wearing his like. It's so weird. Joey's wearing his like. What is this outfit? Is this his like? What is this outfit, actually? <laughs> I mean, I know it's a Domino School outfit, but what, what would you call it? I have to go look at a picture. Let me see. Well, unless you have one. But no, I, I noticed that, though, like, with the... I feel like this is the shiny version of, like, some Yu-Gi-Oh! characters. Yeah! Because like, even really quickly, you see Rex Raptor, like... Yeah, he's in this movie. And he's like completely different colors. And I'm like, this is so weird. Yeah, so we saw, we got to see Proto Rough Draft uh, Rex. Same yeah. we didn't get to see Weevil with like blue hair or some shit. Well, I'm not blue hair, but like, like red haired it's Weevil blonde. or something. <laughs> like yeah, he's a blonde. He's a blonde in this movie. Um, yeah, so uh, sadly, the, the weakest characters in this movie, we're going to get them out of the way. Taya, Tristan, and Miho get a terrible. Uh, representation in this movie to me, yeah. to me personally. Don't get to do anything. Yeah, I, I mean, think they're, they're like for what, like two of the thirty minutes. They're in the tutorial. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, Yu-Gi-Oh has rules now. Holy yeah. shit! Oh, it's Duelist Kingdom rules, kinda, kinda, kinda. Mm -hmm. It has a structure. We have a structure now. It isn't just oh, I play this card. But because this card hates cats on Wednesdays, its attack power goes up by 400. Like, no, it's like honest to God rules. We we got Cursed Dragon, a uh, shiny version of Gaia the Fierce Knight called Gaia the Dark Knight. We got, oh man, we've got the, first, the debut of Red Eyes Black Dragon in this movie. He plays a big role in it. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the Red Eyes Black Dragon in this movie? Normally, I wouldn't ask about a specific card, but I'm asking about this one because Red Eyes is normally Joey's ace card, but he belongs yeah. to a specific character in this movie. What do you think about that? I think it's funny that, like, Joey pretty much ends up, like, stealing it from the kid because when he was like, oh, I did put it in Yugi's deck when you weren't looking. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. It's like, Joey. <laughs> but it's going to be his later on anyway. So. Joey, what if Yugi's deck didn't have any red eye synergy? You fucked us. <laughs> you fucked us. But uh, so the red eyes black dragon. 
So all the time I've seen the lore of the Red Eyes Black Dragon being said that, oh, the Red Eyes isn't as strong as the Blue Eyes White Dragon, but it has potential. And sadly, the only time I got to hear this, like, little theory or rumor or whatever you want to call it was when Joey dueled Kaiba. It was around the time that uh, on Duelist Kingdom when Kaiba lands and duels Joey and basically mops the floor with Joey. Um, and at that point, you can see the parallels. Joey has the red-eyes black dragon. Kaiba has the blue-eyes white dragon. Um, and Yugi kind of skims over the red-eyes black dragon and blue-eyes white dragon's like rivalry. But here we get to actually see it fulfilled. And I love that. I love Red Eyes is one of my favorite cards. I do I did love Red Eyes. I even had like a Red Eyes one of you know those little model toys that you put together piece by piece? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Red Eyes Black Dragon was one of mine. Like that was the one. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to see the Red Eyes Black Dragon get some love. I mean, I liked Red Eyes Black Dragon. I liked Red Eyes Darkness Dragon, even though that card's terrible. Uh, I liked Red Eyes Zombie Dragon. I liked all, like, Black Skull Dragon. I loved all the Red Eyes Black mm -hmm. Dragon variants. So it was cool to see Red Eyes Black Dragon actually play an active role here. Sadly, he gets played in the, uh, in the deck of a kid named uh, Shogetsu. I think that's his name. Sh Shogetsu? Shogetsu? Shogo, yeah. Yeah, Shogo, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Shogo? Um, I mean, I like him. He's cute. He's very obviously just a stand-in for the audience. Of yeah. Being like, ooh, you know, just a kid, and I don't like losing, and I'm, I need confidence, so it's kind of like a second Yugi, who's yeah. even, like, <laughs> you know, more Which there's a lot of in se and more bullied. There's a lot yeah. of Season Zero. In Season Zero, there's a lot of Yugis. There's a lot of little yeah. Yugis. <laughs> I think this was just the, the little Yugi that was movie worthy. Um, mm -hmm. Shogo, to me, he's I'm a, I'm mixed with him. On one hand, I don't like I don't like him. I know that sounds stupid. I don't like him as a character. I don't like his attitude. I don't like I don't like the eh, I'm, I don't want to duel anybody. I don't want to be in the tournament, man. I just got a rare card, but. On the other hand, realistically, this is a real problem. Like, this is a real problem. What do you do when you have the fear of losing or the fear of failure, but you have the potential? Which is kind of what the Red Eyes Black Dragon is supposed to be. He's potential. What happens when you have the potential to be good, but you don't take that risk? Because, obviously, the point isn't that he can beat anybody because he has the Red Eyes. Also, the point isn't, oh, he is automatic. Uh, he's automatically just a terrible player. The problem is he's gotten battered so many times he's afraid to keep trying. But trying is the only way you're going to get better. And he yeah. is the part of, he is the realistically, like, the version of people that don't try. What do you do when you have potential, but you don't use any of your potential? If you don't use it, you lose it, right? Mm -hmm. So I like that Shogo represents the lesson, which is fine. Um, seeing another card shop other than like Solomon Moto's or Duke Devlin's kind of weirds me out. This creepy yeah, old lady. And wasn't it like it was like run by Kaiba, or he was like partnered with them or something? Yes. Yeah, it seemed like some, like, Willy Wonka scheme where it's like, oh, I'm gonna wait for this some kid to get this card, and, and then it's like, okay, whatever, why, Kaiba. Why didn't you just buy it? Why yeah. didn't you buy it? <laughs> this man's sitting up here, surveillance camera in his own card shop to yeah. wait for somebody to get five-star pulls just to challenge them? What the mm. hell is that? <laughs> what kind of What kind of seductive shit is that? Um, oh, Kaiba, good old Kaiba, 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 Kaiba. I mean, we've already talked about Kaiba, but in this movie, what do you think of him particularly? Um, yeah, he's, I don't know, it's just like, this whole special is just like one step closer to season one versus season zero. So yeah. So like, pretty much the same notes as last time, but now it's, he's a little more what we're used to, <laughs> so. So we already talked about this before the stream, but... Uh, and people are going to see it. I made a joke on here that's literally Yugi going, wait a minute, this movie is just me dueling you again? Always <laughs> has been. <laughs> like, okay, if you're watching this movie with the context of all the other stuff from Yu-Gi-Oh! beforehand, which most English audiences are, uh, 
this is just Kaiba versus Yugi again. <laughs> what the hell? Why do they? Why is this the plot to most movies? I mean, nothing against it, I guess. Okay, never mind. There is something against it. It's it's very repetitive. <laughs> yeah. But like, come on, come on. <laughs> this is just Yugi versus Kaiba for thirty minutes. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's not a huge problem considering technically this is the first. Although the uh, the timeline placement's kind of weird here. So, when does, uh, is there a way to place this movie in the timeline? Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know if there's like an official thing if they acknowledge this movie as canon to season zero or well, if it's own universe. I don't know. Well, because my brain is hard to place it because... When Kaiba scans the surveillance, he goes, there, invite that kid who has the red eyes. Also invite Yugi. He made me draw that mm -hmm. one time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So this took place after their first duel, but Yugi beats Kaiba and Death Tower. So Kaiba's mm -hmm. not going to recall the time he lost then. So that mm -hmm. means this had to have happened in the middle or he just doesn't like to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> like either that or, yeah. Lose. Yeah, the only other thing I can think of is maybe this happens after, there's 20, what, there's 27 episodes in Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero. So this may happen after episode, like, 12, 13, or 14. Probably something, like, mm -hmm. really in between. Um, yeah, Kaiba. So, I don't know about you. Do you get Dark Side of Dimensions vibes a little bit with this movie? I do. Um... Yeah, I guess so. I well, mean, Kaiba's obsession, but that's always a running theme. It is a running theme, but more specifically, he steals Yugi's Millennium Puzzle to challenge him to, like, this big event that's happening. And then Yugi goes in to take it. And the moment I saw Ludo Yugi march into the arena to fight Yugi, I'm like, oh, it's just Dark Side of Dimensions. <laughs> this is just Dark Side of Dimensions all over again. Only this time, you know... Keep getting away with it. <laughs> yeah, only this time... Uh, I would say Yugi's a lot more confident in Dark Side Dimensions. He he basically tells yeah. Ka Kaiba to f off in that movie, mm -hmm. but in this movie he's like Kaiba, you're you're kind of a jerk, you know that. Mm -hmm. You you scheduled the kidnapping, and then broke some kid's arm just so you can like start a whole like marathon of people dueling you. You beat Rex Raptor. That's nothing to be proud of. Like, <laughs> and Kaiba's like, shut up. Oh, oh, also, though, we get the prototype duel. I never thought I'd see this thing again. <laughs> I love this stupid thing. Yeah. What do you think of the prototype duel disc? It does have a special charm to it. Yeah. It was more included in stuff. Whenever people talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! in the duel disc, they're always talking about, like, the blue one, the blue and gray right. one. Like, oh, the iconic one. I'm like, what about the Frisbee one, guys? Yeah. <laughs> we love the Frisbee duel disc that realistically can't work in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And would probably just shoot your cards all over the place. <laughs> Oh, I love this thing. I'm so glad that technically this is its first debut. It, it mm -hmm. warms my heart to see a lot of these cards return, too. It's like, I got to see, like, uh, Cyclops. I got to see the, the Minotaur. I got to see mm -hmm. Celtic Guardian take an L again. We love that. <laughs> yeah. We got to see the Dark Magician and his pale ass in this, in this yeah. movie. Because Dark Magician didn't make an appearance in Season 0 except in the opening. Which so weird. He's super pale in this movie, but in his opening, he's fine. What, what yeah, I don't. I want to know why the color palette is like constantly switching between all the shows. Like, uh, my guess, uh, character artists probably thought of many different beta designs for Dark Magician. They finally landed on one because Dark Magician, I want to say debatably, has probably gone through the most changes a vanilla card can absolutely go through. There's obviously the Dark Magician that shows up originally when Bandai still had the license. Then when Konami had the license, there's that Dark Magician. There's the Duelist Kingdom Dark Magician. Then there's the Dark Magician from Battle City. Then there's the Dark Magician yeah. that's crossing its arms. Then there's the, <laughs> hell, they even made a redesign of Dark Magician recently in Master Duels. There's the one uh, design that Kazuki uh, Takahashi, uh, rest in peace. That one scares me. I'm sorry, dude, <laughs> but that, that's the one that scares me. He's where he's got like gray skin. Then there's the Duel yeah. Links version, the Dark Side of Dimensions version. Like, Dark, Dark Magicians had the most, like, changes. I think Dark Magician Girl is the only one that's had as many changes. Mm -hmm. 
Which is yeah. interesting because I know even when they still release figures, they'll do like the alternate color schemes. So yeah. It's, like, it's cool that it's the same, you know, it's always Dark Magician, but they're popular enough that you can sell the same figure three times in different colors. Pretty much, yeah. Dark Magician's like one of the few monsters that's had palette swaps. Mm -hmm. uh, if he was ever a Smash Brothers character, he'd be the one that had the multiple <laughs> designs. Um, yeah. Gaia the Fierce Knight has a palette swap here. I like what you. I like that comment you made with the shiny Pokemon, but for Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. characters, I like that. That, that. That's a great way to actually look at it. Yeah. Um. Oh, the backs of the cards are different now. They actually have the the backs of the cards that we're gonna see from now on. No, no more M upside mm -hmm. down M's. Which thank God. I'm I hate the monster. It. <laughs> I I hated that design. I'm so glad there. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. To me, sometimes <laughs> less is more, and I think I think that this is just basic enough to make it definable, and I like that. Um, wasn't it? What was it like? Monsters and wizards, or something? Yeah, like, monsters. Like name? Yeah, that's the point. It's monsters and wizards. Yeah. I, honestly, that just made me sound like a fool when I say M and upside down M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like it's just funny because it does sound like monsters and wizards sounds like a Walmart version of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> And um, so Kaiba has a deal where what he does is that he summons three blue eyes together, but instead of fusing them to make blue eyes ultimate dragon, he chains them together. Yeah, I didn't why? Really that. <laughs> but why? Yeah, because it was it was like oh they chain them together so they like attack as one, but they're not one. Like okay, <laughs> I don't but, it, but, okay. But Kaiba, why would you do that? <laughs> It doesn't make sense, but I knew if they made Blue Eyes, I think this is like Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon's proto form. Yeah. And I'm going to make a huge reach here, so get ready. My theory is, if the Blue Eyes White Dragons are chained together like this, then that means Kaiba can attack with all three at once, and it adds up their attack. 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. Essentially allowing him to nuke anything. The kicker, though, is... Mm -hmm. It can't take anything stronger than 3,000. Mm -hmm. So the idea is whenever Kaiba attacks, he has the strongest attacking monster ever. Because he can have all three blue eyes attack with 9,000 power. As far as defense, Kaiba doesn't care about defense. He has the ultimate striking force. Blue eyes attacking with three blue eyes. But if the chain breaks, then he will lose the blue eyes. They all go get like they get destroyed but mm -hmm. that chain is as only as strong as one blue eyes so if you make a card that has more than 3,000 attack points they all die mm -hmm. it's stupid I made that up it's stupid as hell but that's what I'm rolling with because that's the only explanation I got for what happens next mm -hmm. um we get to see spellbinding circle in this movie too yeah Ooh. Yeah, that had a different name. I, uh, like, I know what this is. Dark, yeah, Dark Binding Circle or some crap. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, we also get to see, uh, I think we got to see Swords of Revealing Light in this movie. Mm. Yeah, because Kaiba goes, you're only buying your time now. Mm. So yeah, that was cool. And then we also got to see, we got to see more spell and traps in this movie, which I really appreciate. I, mm. I like that. Um, what else did we get to see? They did a lot in this duel. I'm, I'm going to be honest. They, they did a, a whole lot in this duel, and I do appreciate it. I, I like that they were... Uh, it feels good to see, like, old monsters. I got to say Beaver Warrior! Yeah! <laughs> Beaver! Woo! Beaver Warrior! Yugi puts this in his deck legitimately for some reason. <laughs> ah, man. I, I love it. I, I, I think... What was uh, Beaver Warrior's... Beaver Warrior has a different name in... Uh, in Japanese. Yeah. The one I saw just was Beaver, which made me laugh. <laughs> oh, Beaver Warrior's Japanese name is Louise. Yo, let's go, Louise. Louise. Oh yeah. God. Let's go, Louise. Just chilling with Louise. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, so we got to see all that. And then we get to see Yugi use I guess the most broken card of that moment. Palmerization. Mm. So, um, Shogo, uh, Shogo's, is it, did, I pop, did I pop his name? I'm sorry. I think it's Shogo. Shogo. Shogo's yeah. Red Eyes Black Dragon on its own is useless. We've already established that. 
But when fused with other monsters, it's obviously stronger, which is why Joey said, yo, I switched the cards. Um, and jo Joey, you better thank goodness that Yugi has material monsters. <laughs> Otherwise, that would have been the stupidest thing you've ever done. Um, essentially, this is the first time we get to see one of Red Eyes' fusions, and it's not Black Skull Dragon. I thought it was going to be Black Skull Dragon, because in my brain, I'm like, that's the only thing that makes sense. Yugi has summoned Skull. But then Yugi plays Meteor Dragon. I'm like, wait a minute. No. <laughs> They're going to make Meteor Black Dragon? The weird, like, 3200 beat stick monster that never got to be shown in the TV show at all? This is its debut. This is where it winds up actually showing up. I lost my mind. I was happy as hell. What did, what did you think of Meteor Black Dragon? I mean, I'm not a devout Red Eyes <gasps> fan, so <laughs> I didn't I didn't have the same excitement. But I'm glad that you got something out of this special. I lost it's my mind. Of appearance. Yeah, I lost my mind because I'm thinking in my brain. I'm like. They never show Meteor Black Dragon. Mm -hmm. And the anime always has these weird fusions. These fusions that weirdly, like, they show up, but they don't really, like, see any play in, on, like, the game. They never see any play in, like, the, the TV show because they're impractical. Nobody would really use them. Meteor Black Dragon has no effects. It just has 3,200 attack points. The only thing it's got going for it is that it's one of the few monsters stronger than Blue Eyes White Dragon. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all it's got going for it. So when I saw Yugi use fusion, because that's all it's called, it's not called polymerization. When I saw Yugi use fusion and fuse Meteor Dragon with Bread Eyes, first of all, this was risky as hell. Because Joey's like, Yugi is waiting for you to have the courage to say that you want to fight. What if Shogo never had the courage to fight? Would Yugi just lose? Is that what happens? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, Shogo finally goes, fine, I'll try and Yugi's like, good, I was waiting for that. Anyway, <laughs> polymerization, Meteor Black Dragon, and then it came in and completely wiped it out, wiped out Blue Eyes, and Kaiba's like, well, shit. <laughs> and honestly, Kaiba, Kaiba only lost 200 life points. He should have still been able to duel, but I guess that would have defeated the whole movie ending, huh? Yeah. Wasn't he still, like, I thought he took his loss really good in this yeah, he did. Or, like, special. Other times, he's such a sore loser. Yugi, I will not be defeated in my own <laughs> tournament! Character regression over time. Yeah, Kaiba's just like, all right, I admit defeat, but look, you're the only one who can really, like, be on my level. All right, Kaiba. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> And then, we go to, and then we go to Dark Side of Dimensions where Yugi, where Kaiba goes back in time in order to duel <laughs> Yugi because he's that petty. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So, that's pretty much the movie. That's like the plot of the movie. Um, it sort of just ends like that, too. It ends kind of very anticlimactically. I think Shogo just got like... He ends it by playing against those little bullies, which... Mm -hmm. That's the kickstarter to all Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero things. <laughs> Hi, I know that kid. Some bull some kids bully him just like they bully me. The only difference is I'm good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> Even Yugi goes, he's never won a game in his life. Like it it kind of stings a little bit when when you hear him say it, but he I mean he's yeah. being he's being realistic about it. I mean. Yeah. But yeah, so Shogo goes off to in my head canon, he loses against Rex Raptor. Ra Rex Raptor takes the Red Eyes Black Dragon, and then Joey beats Rex Raptor. Oh against the no! Red Eyes. That's what happens. Yeah, Poor that. Shogo. I mean, that's by lit. How else does Joey get the Red Eyes? <laughs> I think Red Eyes Black Dragon has been through the <laughs> most. I think the Red Eyes Black Dragon has been through the most duelist in history. So Shogo <laughs> loses the Red Eyes Black Dragon. No, Shogo gets the Red Eyes Black Dragon in a, in a store in a booster pack. Then loses the Red-Eyes Black Dragon a Rex Raptor in my head. Uh, only to have it switch. No, 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 no. He gets it switched out with Yugi. Yugi uses it. Then he gives it back to Shogo. Then Shogo loses to Rex Raptor. Then Rex Raptor has it. Then Rex Raptor loses it to Joey. Joey then uses it through Duelist Kingdom. Loses it to the Rare Hunter. Hunter. Yugi gets it back. Joey declines it, so Yugi has it in his deck primarily. Then Yugi duels Joey. Yugi loses to Joey at the end of Battle City. Joey gets the Red-Eyes Black Dragon back and then keeps it. 
That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. The red eyes has been through more hands than anyone in the show. The next uh, person that gets it is just like crumples into dust because it's like gone through so many people. Right. Oh, did you notice the smudges that were on the red eyes black dragon? Because Joey beat up the uh, the security mm. guard to get it back. <laughs> Which uh, I guess we got we can real briefly comment on Joey. Um. Not a dueling role, but he I think he did okay. I think he did good in this one. He did yeah. he definitely stepped his character up here. Yeah, it's a lot of like the episode one of Duel Monsters. Yeah. You got your little tutorial duel to load over. Tutorial duel and then he loses and then he's just cheering in the stands. So You got this, you uh yeah. Yeah. But I think we've gone on long enough. Uh, I don't think this one'll be as long as the others because the movie's short. Like, the special, the movie. I mean, hell, right now, if we go on for five more minutes, we'll be, like, right at the movie's length, which, <laughs> that's crazy. But movie, OVA, whatever you want to have it, I think we'll go ahead and uh, conclude here. Overall, what did you think, oh, Natalie? Wait, yeah. Uh, something we didn't mention for season uh -huh. zero, and also applies to this. Uh -huh. The absolute banger that is the OP. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> it's so good. Can I admit something, though? Uh, mm -hmm. Little Karibo, if you're familiar with him, he does the yeah. Abridged series. He ruined it for me. I can't sing the oh, opening correctly. Like, the first, yeah. <laughs> it's instead yeah. it's it's corn on my mouth, mo soup machine. <laughs> I can't sing the song correctly anymore. I, I like because what he did was uh he did like a misheard lyric situation. Yeah. Where I he put the it. sub yeah he put the subtitles on. So my brain makes that version instead. And I'm just like, damn it. Mm -hmm. I can't appreciate this song in its full glory because my brain has made a silly version of this song. Mm -hmm. But it is a good song. What do you I think of it? I love it. What do you think of the ending song? That's good. I like it too. I think yeah. both of, like, there's good stuff in Duel Monsters, but I don't know. This, like, if I had to pick Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, like, out of oh. all series, it might be, like, my favorite OP. And maybe ending. I don't know. It's really catchy. It's got that really yeah. good, like, late 80s, early 90s catchiness to it. And I, I mm. love it. I think it's also because it's old, so it has, like, that little, like, that little hymn, that little, like, staticky hymn that you get mm. from listening to, like, old VHSs and stuff. I like it. I like it. I, I like it. I like that. That it's a weirdly specific and nostalgic. The ending is it so weird to me? The ending sounds like a song I've heard before, even though I never heard that song before. Mm. Yeah. Maybe they probably played it, and I just didn't realize it. Yeah, that's what I thought too when I, I when I watched it because I'm like, this is really familiar, but I'm like, I've only seen this OVA like once. Once. I don't know where else. Now I gotta like yeah. look and see did like did. Dark Side of Dimensions probably allude to it. Did they do like a callback or or did a Yu-Gi-Oh special do it? There's got to be like some reference that I'm missing because this sounded so familiar. I'm like, why do I feel like I've heard this song before and I haven't? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, overall, um, really good. I, I, I think there was some other music in there that uh, during the duel that was really good too. Yeah. 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 The, just the OST is really good too. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. Um, is there, is there anything else you want to add on? Um, Shogo reminds me of Tori from the Deoxys movie. Ah! Uh, <laughs> That's about it. I think you just blew my mind, you know what? <laughs> I didn't even put those two things together. He doesn't like Pokemon, he doesn't like dueling, but he wants to... Wow. <laughs> wow. There you go. I mean, movies do this a lot, where they have, like, the stubborn little character... Yeah. That doesn't want to embrace something. And then the movie goes on and they see the main character and how awesome they are. And they're like, main character, huh? I'm ready to be kind of like you. But then the movie will end. <laughs> I'm ready to buy more training cards. <laughs> right. But then the movie ends so we'll never see them again because they're a movie exclusive character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, yeah. I, I'm i glad you connected those pieces. That's two Pokemon mm -hmm. references too. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, for those of y'all who haven't seen it, definitely give it a watch. I enjoyed myself very thoroughly when I watched this. It, I'm just a little sad to see season, like, that's like the last season zero thing, I think, too. Like, we don't get any more OVAs or specials after this, so it makes me kind of sad. No Mokuba in this one. Huh. Yeah. Weird. Bizarre. I guess it's kind of hard to have a m little boy main character when you got a little boy main character already on the side, so. Mm -hmm. 
He was he was getting his redesign and he didn't uh, he didn't show up in time. That, that's what what happened. Yeah. So that that's pretty much what took place. I think Little Karibo made that joke too. He was like, "Can I be in the movie, Seto?" No, Mokuba. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> yeah. All right. But with that being said, this is the final thing we've got for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters March. At the time of recording this, well, this will more than likely be uploaded tomorrow or on Friday or this day to the live. But anyway, it'll be the last <laughs> thing. Natalie, um, I want to thank you so much for joining me again for another fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters March. As always, thank you. Yes. And if you want <laughs> thank to... Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And if you want to uh, see more of what Natalie's got cooking, head on over to Twitter. It's time to Drew. Make sure you check that out. Uh, as well as, I believe you do stuff on Instagram too, right? Yeah, it's just all the same stuff you'll see on Twitter. Yeah, you got <laughs> trinkets, you have little cool stuff, you do art. Mm -hmm. It's really great, guys. Yeah. Make sure you go check her out. I had to talk to the Yu-Gi-Oh! aficionado on this one. Um, it's really good. Had a really great time. Uh, sadly, because of the internet situation, I wasn't able to do as much Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff, but... That means that next March, yeah, you guys got to wait a whole yeah, year. I'm one sorry. more year. One more year. We will have a lot more content. So we are alluding to a lot more content uh, with the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. We'll be able to whip out more uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, more specials, a lot more great stuff to come. And hopefully Yu-Gi-Oh! the franchise gives us more cool stuff in order to talk mm -hmm. about and do a review over. So with that being said, Tyrone, TG3, out. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.